Hello and welcome to the Ramon Foster Show, brought to you by the Get Go Cafe and Market, where they are open for business twenty four seven, serving hot fresh food. Hi, buddy. Hey, welcome back, kiddo. Oh, I'm all the way back, mode. I'm not. You're not. Are you still on IR? What is this 15 day DL? What are we calling this right now? I don't know. I think it goes from 15 day to 60 day, right? So I'm hoping <laughs> to avoid the 60 on, yeah. on on this one. I know you had all kinds of fun without me here on the show. I did. I did. I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to earn my place back. You know, I kind of Wally pipped a little bit here. And, uh, you know. You know what Coach T says, man. The train keeps moving. <laughs> <laughs> you either get with us, DK, or the train. I tell you, the, what we have going on here at the Ramon Foster Show is this. We are the NFL shield, okay? Nothing's going to stop this train. Is all I'm telling you, DK. Unless it's just the body catches up with us and we got to shut it down. But the this train, train here keeps, keeps moving. moving. Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> let's uh, let's get to our subject du jour here, and it's 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 Ben Roethlisberger. Yeah, and let me let me throw this at you here. When Kenny Pickett met with us at the rookie mini camp after his session, he spoke very briefly about having heard from Ben, yeah, and about about Ben having offered uh, his ear and his you know his advice and whatever else here. Um. How involved do you expect Ben Roethlisberger to be, not just with the Steelers, but really with anything uh, publicly here now that he's retired? Uh, I, I say this. I think Ben is probably going to play a little bit more of a backseat when it comes to being involved in it because as big as he was there, it's time to let somebody else grow into that role also. you know, And that's, that's what a true pro would be. And I know Ben loves and, and appreciates everything the city of Pittsburgh has done for him, but specifically the team. And just looking at the way he reached out to Kenny. We talked about this the other day and the fact that Kenny's no threat to Ben and, and Ben's out of the way. But one thing Ben does have is being a first round draft pick drafted to the Pittsburgh Steelers from. And I say this respectfully, but Ben came from Miami, Ohio, and nobody really knew anything about it. Kenny Pickett is from Pitt and nobody really looks at them as a quarterback school other than, let's be honest, Danny Marino. OK, yeah, Dan Marino. it goes way back. Yeah, it, it goes way back. So to have those two dynamics, I know Pitt is a big division one school, but that hasn't been a big reputation of putting a quarterback into the league that early. Um, and with that being said, I thought it was appropriate. I feel like the situations are very similar. Two guys that got a pretty much. Um, prove themselves to the city, had to prove themselves in college, and will be faced with a huge, <clears throat> a huge challenge of filling a void that, you know, being left behind whenever that gives itself room to. Now, again, you got Mitch and Mason that have been there also. So you mm-hmm. can't necessarily say that it's going to be handed to them. But I think it says a whole lot when you got a guy like Ben reaching out to a guy like Kenny Pickett. That no, he it's, it's, a, it's a nice gesture, okay? I'm not going to – but you can tell I, I'm, I'm a little skeptical here. If yeah. I ask Kenny Pickett in four or five months, you know, hey, how often have you and Ben communicated? What kind of answer am I going to get? Probably not much. Yeah, that's what I'm saying here. I, I just, yeah. And, and again, I'm not saying this to to get cynical about Ben or whatever else here. I'm I'm mostly curious as to what extent he's going to be involved slash visible in any form. Because you'll remember that he also had the radio show uh, on. I think it was on on WDVE early in the mornings. Yeah. Um, and 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 when. You know, he seemed to enjoy that until it started to get him in trouble because he was saying <laughs> stuff on the radio show that he wouldn't say anywhere else. His teammates would hear about it and everything else here. Do you think that he's going to be that guy? Do you know what I mean? No. Yeah, no, 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 no. I, I, me personally, right now on May 19th, 2022, I can't see him being that guy. Will there be some questions asked about him? Yeah, I'll say this. I, I Just to be completely honest with you, I don't see him playing the role of the way kind of Bradshaw has played towards Pittsburgh in a sense. I just don't see that in Ben's future unless something turns and flip, flip over and, and change. You know, Terry's kind of said some stuff in the past, whether it be about Ben, the coach, 
the team. You know what I'm saying? And I, sure. I can't see in this era of the way Ben was able to leave Pittsburgh, him being that guy. As far as guidance and telling Kenny where he should go or, you know, off the field, off the record stuff, I can see that being the case. But okay, he's going to have to walk this on his own. See, that's the other thing that, that comes into play here is that we see these monstrous contracts that are being given out to former quarterbacks to come and be analysts. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, monstrous, like things that blow away the playing days. Okay, and look at the money that Drew Brees was offered, and then Brees kind of was like, yeah, yeah. yeah, he's pushing back now. They didn't tell me this was going to be work. <laughs> You know, yeah. I thought they were just going to have me there for my wisdom and 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 my my good looks and charm. You no. know, and then now I got to come in here and work. This is this is different. It's um, it's enticing. You, you know, you bring that up, but I'll say this too about that. Ben's never been coveted the way those other quarterbacks that you're bringing up are, as far as the media goes. The respect factor has always been there, but the way they covet Breeze. Brady, who you're talking about getting $37.5 million a year to do that job. Um, I know. Peyton and Eli even. You know, I even know. they were it's in crazy. a different different spotlight. And that's not like Pittsburgh's a small market. Well, it, it's a medium-sized market, but the exposure that Pittsburgh gets is far better than what the Giants have gotten as of late. Probably better than what um, Eli has gotten even in, when he was with the New York Giants. So, I, I, do you I wouldn't see ben say doing is that. that. Do you see Ben like entertaining an offer from like a, you know, I mean, there's there's enough of these broadcasts now. He's a big enough name. Yeah. You know. Um, no, I don't. Just why plain. is that? That's what I want to hear. Why? Because I will say this. I, I would almost think that Ben feels uh, just our exposure in Pittsburgh was a little bit more slighted towards everybody else. You know, it was always Brady and even Patrick or Brady and, and Aaron, I would see Aaron Rodgers doing that before Ben actually took it on because I feel like as, as much scrutiny as Ben has had in the press or is always the doubt of where everybody's always given the optimism side of their job, it wasn't the case with Ben. So why would he actually dive into that world? That's my personal opinion on, on what I feel like his decision to do something like that. And Ben's got kids that he want to actually see be raised up if and it is work. That's the it part is that people work. don't realize. They just, the quarterbacks are just like, they just show up that night at the booth no. a half hour before kickoff. You know, they have to spend all week long studying these teams. I'm sure that even applies to the Manning brothers as much fun as they've had. Mm -hmm. And it's been great. I mean, like that that whole, you know, Peyton, Eli thing, they've, they've formed their own little brand, their own right. subsection of NFL <laughs> broadcasts still have to work you still can't get caught unaware on a broadcast or you're going to get embarrassed no. you've got to know how to pronounce 106 names mm -hmm. you've got to know all 106 names or you're going to sound we, foolish if we can be honest Romo kind of got called out a little bit over the last mm -hmm. couple of years uh, you know he's gotten criticized by people in the market by saying he doesn't prepare He's no, good with he the X's thought, and O's. He got caught up in the fact that he did. everyone said, look at Tony. Tony's calling plays before they happen. Wow. Yeah, he was an NFL quarterback. Mm -hmm. And and he, he might have gotten caught up a little bit too much in that. And then, like you said, the next thing you know, you're mispronouncing somebody's name or you're getting their position wrong or you're getting their college wrong. Uh, or you're not understanding that so-and-so is actually somebody's backup or whatever. <laughs> and it, it can really come back to bite you. But no, I, I don't see Ben doing that nah. either. He just seems like he's just going to you know, do his Fall thing back. at home. Yeah. I, I'd love to see him try to you know help guide Kenny more than anything. Kenny Pickett. Uh, I, those background roles, I, I think he'd be much better suited for than to put himself back in the spotlight like that. That would be interesting. Uh, when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about Deshaun Watson. Welcome back to the Ramon Foster Show. This is the most pleasant subject here. The Browns are in the AFC North, and Deshaun Watson is going to be an enormous part of the Browns season, whether he plays or not. Mm -hmm. And they have very clearly placed all of their figurative eggs in his basket. Moan. Based on what you've heard yeah. about him, about uh, the depositions to date, about what the league is looking to do here, my goodness, what are the chances that he plays like at all this season? 
You you know what? I actually I think he does play this year. I'll just go ahead and throw that out. Um, from my understanding, if you look at the uh, Cleveland Browns schedule. Their marquee games are actually the second half of the season. What does that usually tell you, DK, when it starts to break down to the NFL? And again, I told you in the segment earlier, the the, the train doesn't stop. Uh, <laughs> does it not when it comes down to it? Their, their games are uh, starting week eight, Cincinnati as an 815 game on Monday night. Now, again, I think Deshaun gets eight games. I do. I think he get a half a season, well, a little bit less than a half a season now. Uh, he gets eight games, and then they're at Miami. Then they got Buffalo. Then they got Tampa. And then you got Houston, Cincy again. It, it doesn't matter. It it's, doesn't matter because what's your record through eight games? But but my thing is the show has finally arrived, and that's the Sean Watson. I don't yeah. care about if they make the playoffs or not. My thing is the NFL is strategically probably placing these better games on the second half of the season because they know themselves. They got to justify him playing Ooh, by giving them a half a season. That is conspiracy. And because this is the other part, and Deshaun did. has some pushback on this. He wasn't found guilty in the court of law not when it yet. comes down to those allegations. No. He wasn't found guilty because of those allegations. Those were tossed out. Okay, I see what you're saying. Now, the civil side of it, DK, you've probably had a civil lawsuit. Somebody else you know have had a civil lawsuit. We saw other guys, James Harrison, I think, had the civil with the dogs, whatever had happened at that, because it was reported. Civil is different than legal. Now, again, I know the NFL doesn't operate as far as the judicial system. They will suspend you, i.e., let's go um, 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 uh, Zeke Elliott, Without proof. So they can still suspend them because these are work related rules that they have in place. So yeah, because they're their of their own that, judicial system. I mean, the same exactly. thing happened to them. Yes. So if I was to ask you, DK, um, well, what do you think is justified for a guy who wasn't proven guilty? They probably tell you um, half a season, maybe one of the more stricter, or maybe even 10 games. Yes. Yeah, but see, their bye week where... falls directly. In week nine, the halfway point of the season for the Cleveland mm-hmm. Browns. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but if you look at it, it almost makes sense. Yeah, I can see that. I, I guess the thing that jumps out at me here is, you know, football doesn't happen in a vacuum, just like other sports don't happen in a vacuum. And when I look at the way Major League Baseball handled Trevor Bauer of the Dodgers, and he, yeah. got, he got that type of punishment, mostly because Major League Baseball didn't want uh, they didn't want to be the ones that were the outlier. They yeah. didn't want to they didn't want to be the Ray Rice, yeah. you know. Uh, and and with the way the NFL was, the NFL was looked at, and rightly so yeah. at the time of Ray Rice. Is really, really yeah. you're yeah. going to be that league, and no one wants that now because there's all kinds of repercussions that come from that, including from sponsors, advertisers, ticket holders, and everything else. Never yeah. mind just doing the right thing. You know? I, I know. I mean, I'm setting that off to the side. Yeah, yeah. Well, the NFL usually misses the mark on these types of things. And one thing that we've learned that it is a player driven league and they love the superstars too. I'm not justifying what Deshaun did. I I don't believe in anything that he's done that, uh, as far as those accusations is is right. I'm I'm opposed to it if he's done it. And it seems to be some truth, which is why I think the NFL will suspend him for a significant amount of time. I he's really don't think so. Some of it. Uh-huh. I mean, he's, he's acknowledged some of it. Yeah, he has. And I think yeah. that's what gets him half of the year. Yeah. At a minimum. I say eight to ten is is where I can see him. And you know what's going to happen, DK, the sad part behind it? The week that he's slated to come back, whenever that is in 2022, and I'll stand on that one. I Because the fact that the NFL is even NFL.com is even putting up, he's taking his team to the Bahamas. NFL.com is even putting on their Twitter account and their sites, him throwing in Cleveland. They are behind the superstar. With that being said, they will, I think in itself, find a way to pub him up the week of his return as vile as it is. Those accusations, as long as he handles his off the field stuff, Looks remorseful, remorseful, sounds remorseful, pays them off, and this never happens again, DK. You know like I know. Winning cures all. And if they can get a downtrodden organization like Cleveland to be relevant, then they're going to back that too because that means their pot of money in which the dog pound is always going to be there. But now it has an opportunity to grow. 
they're going to enjoy that because money rules all when it comes down to the NFL. And I've learned that. And still in all, still in all, every single set of predictions that's out there, every single betting line that's out there has the Browns ahead of the Steelers. We shall as see, if, man. As if this doesn't exist. So, to that point, Vegas is usually never wrong. Am I right? Like, they usually are spot on with those types of things as far as predictions. Now, it's to make you bet, but they probably are hinging that on the fact that Deshaun will be back in the fold sooner than later. Yeah, well, that's a bet in and of itself that I wouldn't want to make. When we come I'm back, not taking it. No, when we come back, hey, Mo. Welcome back to the Ramon Foster Show. It's time for our Hey Moan segment. And today's entry comes from Scott Sander, who says, Hey Moan! He said it just like that, too. <laughs> he did. ABC's teammates passed him over uh, in team MVP voting for Juju, and AB didn't react well. Was that vote a message being sent by his teammates? Seems a lot of AB's unraveling occurred after that announcement. Mm. Mm, indeed. Wow. Um, I, I saw that question too, and I was just, I was just like, Ugh, I, I don't I don't really know how to justify that. Um, as as far as saying well, that that was why did why did Juju get Team MVP? Because he had a hell of a year. Yeah, he, he just did, did that it. year. It was his only hell of a year, but it was I, it, it was, it was. and. I think we all can be honest, too. That was also on the, the basis that Antonio Brown was out there. You know, it's, it's Very almost obvious like now. <laughs> in, in every Very league, obvious. the best players sometimes can't win. I won't say can't win or they just simply don't win the MVP every year because you I don't want to say you get, you know, numb to it. A.B. was definitely the best receiver on the roster, but Juju had the best, I guess, breakout season. Yeah, and you couldn't hide place. that. He had huh? impact splash plays back when Juju was capable of that. You know, those yeah. seventy-five yard touchdowns and so forth. Yeah, he he did, and you couldn't. I, I couldn't justify not voting for him. I think I ended up voting for Juju's myself personally because that year was one of the best years I, I've seen a young guy have in a very long time, and it was just on the fact that it was new. He was big time into everybody around the team. He, and, and and honestly, that was the best justifiable person to give it to that year, man. I ain't even mad at it. If if it was 1,400 yards, I mean, he had like a 97-yard touchdown that year. Mm-hmm. Uh, his, his brand was growing. And A.B., I thought, would have taken that better. I, to say that, you know, that was a, the switch that kind of did it for Antonio. Um, he may have already just been at that point anyway to just be like, well, my time here is done. I mean, think about it. Most receivers, they don't want anybody clicking at their heels when it comes down to it. Like, as far as being numero uno, I think everybody will have a reaction when they realize that somebody's caught up to them when you're the best in the world. You know? Oh, sure. That's that's just human. However, but, however, mm-hmm. I feel obligated to throw this in. I get so tired of hearing this thing was the trigger point. This thing was to blame. This thing was, no, he just lost his mind. Okay. If, if he wasn't going to lose his mind over one thing, he was going to lose it over something else. You know? Yeah. And I, I wasn't even mad at it. Just truth be told, maybe that, that situation had already run its course, DK, like to your point about, you know, a B in the year that he had. And like, if we're being honest that year, AB had uh 1200 yards and Juju had 14. You know, so it's 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 as if it was bound to happen regardless. And he had all the double coverage and everything else here. I'm just saying I, I just this idea that somehow somebody else or something else is always to blame for for what happened to AB. I just I don't accept it. I really don't. You know, at some point you're responsible for your own behavior. You are and and I'm not going to excuse it. I I honestly do think and I can say this I think he had a plan, regardless of the fact. Uh, I, I'll say this, too, and I've said this in, in, in uh, private conversations. I think A.B. knew our door was closed. And I think he found his way out. 
Like, I didn't want to realize it going into the 19th season that, you know, we didn't have a strong shot to win. You know what I'm saying? But I knew in the back of my mind, everything had to have fallen in place for us to go win a Super Bowl. That's correct. Like, as a pro, you know, you know what I'm saying? As far yeah, you as, know. you know, and yep. I don't think any fan can be mad at me by saying, look, I knew we probably weren't going to win the Super Bowl in 2019 or 2020. Just being completely honest with you, even with the 11 and 0 start in 2020, like a lot of things had to go right. That and was I think one really crazy 11 and 0 start. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah. But you you knew to yourself like this ain't real. No, that was you, you, it wasn't real. And I think well, AB, I mean, I'll, I'll give him this much credit. I think he was strategic in knowing that he had to go find the next thing. And I ain't even mad at it. It happens in business where you sell it before it tanks. It happens in life where you're like, well, I'm going to break up with her before she break up with me in high school. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And I'll give him that credit of saying, well, I'm getting older. Juju's already on my backside and I got to figure out a way to maximize my positioning somewhere else. And that's what he did. Oh, man, that subject, the one that never, ever, ever stops giving and it's still going on in the chat that we did about AB still. On tomorrow's show, we're going to open up with uh, your very favorite subject this past draft. Yes, let's go. Oh, yeah.